Hello, my name is Scott Ellis. I'm a foot and ankle orthopedic surgeon at the Hospital for Special Surgery in New York. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about a particular passion I have, and that's assessing first metatarsal pronation in patients with hallux valgus. And I think it's a topic that's gaining increasing um, notice or popularity, particularly with the advent of weight-bearing CAT scan. Although, as I really looked into it, it's something people have recognized for years. Uh, and I think with this new technology, it's perhaps that fourth dimension, if you will, of our understanding of bunions. And I think understanding it can help us lead to better surgical treatments and, and outcomes. A uh, few disclosures, I uh, work uh, or consult with Strike, uh, Striker Right Medical. Um, there's a plate uh, that I use that um, I, I use to fix some of the bunions, but it's not gonna change the concept of pronation, which can apply to a wide variety of techniques. Um, I consult for Paragon 28 in my, um, Disclosures are all up to date on the AAOS website. Uh, it's a really interesting article that came out recently from Jesse Stedman, Alexi Barge, and Charlie Saltzman uh, in Foot and Angular International, uh, looking at this concept of first metatarsal rotation in hallux valgus. They did a very nice historical perspective where they looked through the literature, not only in, in foot and ankle, or even for that matter, orthopedics, but a, a wide variety of literature, including radiology, et cetera, over the you know, last I'm gonna say five or six decades. And sure enough, I think people have been talking about this for a while, but we're really, like I said, coming to understand this no, uh, notion of rotation, specifically of pronation. Uh, we all know that, bio, that um, hallux valgus is biomechanically uh, multifactorial. Uh, the rotation definitely plays a role and could be the chicken or egg effect. Here's a, a diagram showing the various things that happen. Uh, we all think about how the first metatarsal, for example, it comes in the relative varus position as the big toe goes into valgus, um, but probably as there's a rotation or pronation of that metatarsal too, it brings these uh, flexor and extensor tendons to pull out of their normal line. Uh, and that can further, for example, with the extensor tendons, rotate the big toe uh, out of position even more. And then of course you have pull of your adductor tendons as well. Uh, so that while the first ray may be coming into varus, it's also rotating and sometimes even pulling upward. So uh, it's not the only story, but rotation certainly plays a role. Uh, we've been working hard, this is some of our research at Special Surgery and trying to understand and, doc and document and quantify the amount of pronation. Uh, this is what we're calling the triangular angle of pronation. And that is now uh, published in Foot and Angle International. But a uh, long story short, based on weight-bearing CAT scans, this is a coronal view to orient everybody First metatarsal, second, third, fourth, fifth, as I'm moving my arrow from right to left. Uh, we take an angle between the floor uh, and the, uh, a line down the bottom in this coronal view of the metatarsal head. And these two blue dots are defined by the, um, the most deep part, if you will, of the sulcus of the, um, the groove where the sesamoids fit in. And that's called the triangular angle of pronation to the floor. What we think is probably even a better measure though, is not to normalize it to the floor, but rather to have a normalization to a specific axis in the foot. And, and you can't see it all here, but we also with our PAC system take an uh, axis of the second metatarsal uh, by drawing lines uh, uh, down the axis itself and taking a perpendicular. But this is a uh, line here that gives us the axis of the second metatarsal. And so by taking the angle between the second and first, this is what we're calling the triangular angle of pronation with respect to the second metatarsal. And basically what we found is that if you take a group of flat foot, uh, or excuse me, to say hallux valgus patients, because we've also done it in flat foot, but if you take a measure of um, pronation in hallux valgus uh, patients compared to controls, there's a relative increase on average between two and eight degrees of pronation. And uh, I'd like to add one more thing. Um, this is a preoperative image on the left, my patient, and a postoperative on the right. You can see how that angle, compared to this case, the floor, has really become more parallel to the floor. And also, which is not necessarily directly related, but the position of these sesamoids now comes back underneath uh, the metatarsal head. And, and sesamoid position and pronation don't always go hand in hand, but there um, is always some relative correction when you fix a bunion in, in both. Uh, it's it's hard, despite what we know about pronation, to really dial it in at the time of surgery. Here's a case I did with a lapidus where uh, I made my medial eminence incision in the first web space incision, but I marked out with electric cautery before I did anything to the first tarsal joint. 
uh, a line on both sides so that as I fixed the bone, I rotated it out of relative pronation, uh, probably by three or four millimeters. Now what that equates to in degrees, I still don't know. We're gonna need to do ways to, or figure out ways to, to quantify this. But I uh, uh, consciously uh, supinated that metatarsal so that my toe position ultimately would be better. Again, pronation is not the only part of fixing a bunion, but I think it's a part we uh, are increasingly recognized as important. Now, it's important to say also that there are many surgical techniques that you can use to address first metatarsal pronation. I just showed a lapidus, which is a first team T fusion, but all these um, methods, uh, which are pictures taken out of that uh, article from Utah that I showed at the beginning, um, all these can also address pronation because you have an ability on each way that you cut the bone of rotating the metatarsal. Here's the proximal rotational metatarsal osteotomy by Amelia Wagner and Heels colleagues where they cut proximally and rotate. Um, there's also this sliding wedge uh, uh, oblique um, proximal osteotomy as well. And depending on how you cut that or slide it, you can also rotate the metatarsal. But even techniques such as the scarf, you can angle your cut uh, also to relatively uh, supinate the, the uh, metatarsal and correct the pronation. And, and certainly with a chevron, or more distal osteotomies where you're cutting straight across, you can also rotate. So many different ways to do it. Uh, we have done more research recently showing that if you do not correct pronation, there is a higher risk of the bunion recurring. And probably this is due in part to those abnormal muscle uh, forces pulling as I showed in the diagram before. Here's an example on the left of a patient where uh, after, this is after surgery, I did not get the uh, pronation completely corrected and the sesamoids are not quite corrected in that metatarsal has recurred, or sorry, that uh, metatarsal deformity, the, the varus position of the first metatarsal has recurred. Here on the right side, those sesamoids have now normalized. You can tell that the axis or that triangular angle of pronation compared to the floor is now uh, completely corrected. And that's a bunion that has uh, been corrected, healed, and is going to stay in that position and have a better outcome. So pron correcting pronation as part of the rest of the deformity is key. We could go on and on, but I just wanted to give a brief introduction. Um, and just to conclude, I think uh, people recognize and describe, maybe not so much detail, this concept of pronation in Halix Vagos, even since the 1950s for years. Uh, and why the pronation occurs is multifactorial. I didn't mention this before, but some think it's from first TMT hypermobility that can allow that joint to rotate. Um, some people actually even think that there's torsional changes, that the anatomy of the first metatarsal has some twist built into it. Uh, I think probably more likely is the latter where there's unbalanced soft tissue forces and muscle pulls that exacerbate a pronation that starts and make it get worse. Um, Halix valgus patients in general, I said, had a two to eight degree worsening pronation. Depending on the study you read, it might be anywhere from six to 13. And it also depends on how you measure it, but they certainly have more pronation than controls. Many of the surgical techniques that we now use can uh, correct pronation. Uh, the lapidus that I showed is certainly one of them. Uh, and the, we have preliminary data that show that if you correct the pronation, you have a lower chance of that bunion recurring. And I didn't show the data here, but probably better surgical outcomes. So something that we need to look at going forward, weight-bearing CAT scan, even sesamoid views will help us continue to look at it. And we need to look critically before and after surgery and develop surgical techniques and instrumentation that will help us uh, with this ultimate goal. Thank you very much.